All right. Okay. Great. Well, officially, welcome back to another episode of the Retro Bros, and uh, this is a very special episode. So let's say hello. Welcome back, uh, Retro Bro, Adam. How you doing? Steve. Hello. And of course, welcome back, Retro Bro, Chris. Hello. I was trying to work out the last time you were on the show, Chris. Um, I think uh, the caravan escapades, whether it was that one. Or it could potentially have been when we were discussing uh, VR and I brought my um, Oculus Rift to your house and we had a short, I was in a short part of that video talking about the Oculus Rift with you or you were talking about VR. So I can't remember which video comes first or last, but it's one of those. So there's there's the the, the science museum, the, um, uh, what's it? Oh called? yeah, of course. Yeah, it was a power up. A power up event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. It's been on our, on our lists for like, ever since starting the retro bros to be honest to get us all onto one episode like and yeah. I, I felt like this was the perfect one to do it plus it's christmas so it gave us an opportunity to sort of make yeah. a christmas episode before the end of the year today's episode is just going to be us talking about christmas memories uh gaming christmas memories um and that can be obviously like games you got for christmas you know games you were disappointed by or games you really like loved or they could just be games that you played around Christmas time that remind you of Christmas. So, yeah, I felt like that was a good topic to, to, to kick off this episode and then we can just see where it goes. It's the like the ones that disappointed you that always, always stick in your mind. And it's funny, actually, because I've already used one of the one of the big uh, Christmas disappointments in our last podcast. I was thinking about that, actually, because I remember thinking what was one of the, the biggest disappointments and one of the biggest, like most exciting Christmas like presents that we we'd had and uh we mentioned it in the last episode which was for me yeah. pokemon yellow and for you pokemon yellow <laughs> the dis- disappointment of like had pokemon blue waited all year and then pokemon yellow came and it wasn't for me and it was for you so yeah but i've got another one so uh but to be honest i'm going to be really interested in listening to what you guys have got to say because i would have been there through most of it i think we've been pretty lucky really in a way because in, i was trying to think through disappointments i've got one right but then after that even though i might not have got any game related stuff for christmas maybe i did maybe i didn't but uh someone always did like someone would have got something good every year so even if it wasn't you like it kind of wasn't disappointing like it was difficult for it to be disappointing because you always got to play that thing anyway you know there was never this like i locked myself in my room you can't play this (laughs) it was always like just give me the controller give me the controller so yeah it's uh it's 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 lucky lucky and so many years I was like tricked into buying something by you, Steve. Like you got me to um, get the Ion drum kit for Rock Band 2. You were like, you've got to get this like a real drum kit. You can play it as a real drum kit. You really like it, you really like it. I wasn't even really into Rock Band, but I was like, mum, I want an Ion Rock Band 2 drum kit. And then it fucking came and it was like filled up the whole room. And then Christmas came and I spent ages setting it up with an Allen key and I set it up and you were like, Hey man, let me have a go. And I didn't even play it for like the first hour and a half. I was like, Steve, yeah, but I wasn't I? Was wasn't I just visiting? Like, yeah, did, that was the excuse. That was the excuse. You're yeah, like, but just like, how old were you? How old were you then? Yeah. You must have been like twenty or something. Like, no. <laughs> I can't make no, I can't make any excuses about that. So I was thinking, like, oh my god, what did I? What did I con him into getting <laughs> age seven? Like twenty. Like, you have got to make your own decisions, I, you know. Fifteen, man. Fifteen. Yeah. Well, still, like, come yeah. On. yeah. But um, I can remember um, that year, actually, funnily enough, I was just looking through old photos of, uh, like, uh, my uh, my eldest daughter. And um, Aurea, there's the my earliest photo of Aurea at Christmas with us is her on that drum kit in the conservatory, like, with a dummy in. And she's doing, like, this cool thing. It really looks like she's drumming. I've got a really good photo of it. And that was like, wow, she's 14 now. So that's 13 years ago. Yeah, mad. Pretty mad, cr- if, that's the, right. if that's the kit that I'm thinking of, the one that you had it in is, the conservatory. Is. And we used it loads, Steve, when you lived with uh, at Grandma's with me. We played it like every day. You remember? So, like, yeah, so it was actually a fantastic buy, and you should be thanking <laughs> me for the for the amazing foresight of like how this is going to improve the family in many different ways. And that was the first time Wi-Fi was a thing, uh, certainly to my knowledge. I was like, so what's happening now? Is it like connected to the internet? We were like, yeah, it's just connected. Like, I don't even think it was called Wi-Fi. It's just called wireless. And it was like, yeah, it's, it's wirelessly connected. And we're like. All right, so it doesn't need, it doesn't even need a wire to go from the PC in the dining room, like along into here, like normal. 
They're like, no, no, it's just, it just does it. And we're like, oh, this is amazing. We watched the buffer wheel for like 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> waiting to load or whatever um but then finally once it came on um i was just blown away it was just like yes you can play tennis and bowling like this is the future i just can't believe it. i remember i'm always so blown away by the newest thing um and yeah i can remember the we really for me was like this is this is it this is the main thing i'm going to play for years even now occasionally i'll still go do you want to play a couple of games of old tennis? And we just turn the Wii on and just like have a couple of games of old Wii tennis because why not? You know, it's right there. I do remember it was sold out everywhere and we were trying to find one somewhere and, and we eventually found one. John Lewis? Or I yeah. can't remember. Yeah? I think we just went £100 each or something for it and got it and it was like, I was just like, I can't believe we could afford that at that time. And yeah, I think it was for Christmas, Jamie, but... Um, it was, it was. Yeah, I remember it so clearly because I actually, Chris, what you're talking about is is my Wii. Like, I know that you, how you would have pre-ordered it and got it as well, but the Wii that we were playing at the time was in the conservatory, same place. And, yes. and you, Adam and Steve, were in London and you had bought it together and I didn't think I was getting it because it was sold out everywhere. Mm. And I got it with the, with the pack and it was, was great. And again, Nintendo, like a testament Nintendo, they always keep their costs down and they make the consoles brilliant like there's always innovative and that came with like Wii Sports we uh, play maybe I can't remember but it was like a like a quick game version of it was like Wii Sports was the tennis and the bowling and all that stuff and then there was like I'm going to say we play and it was like yeah. air hockey and, and, and smaller versions of that um but they just came with the so but they were brilliant they were so interactive and we played that all Christmas. When you're thinking about these presents, you're kind of thinking like, well, what is going to be like the best thing to get for everyone? You know, like obviously it would have been like, because I remember like Chris, you you had the Game Boy, right? And I don't remember mm. when you got the Game Boy for Christmas or for your birthday because they were so close, right? But I would have liked a Game Boy, and I could have liked it. Oh, I want, I want a Game Boy, but then I'll have a Game Boy, and you'll have a Game Boy. Mm. But yeah. what we could do could have another system. You know what I mean? And then you, and then like if you were a kid, if you were, if you were a kid, and every single Christmas you got like a new machine you would think like by the end of like a few years you pretty much like have that whole generation and maybe one of the next generation that come out and people would be like why well, have you got all these consoles you've got so many consoles you can be really spoiled but we kind of did have like a bit of a setup like that yeah we didn't have every machine but we had more mm -hmm. machines than we would have had in yeah. the house accessible to us than if it was just like if you were just on your own do you know what i mean i can go first about their disappointment then because that, that, oh. that one does not count <laughs> Yeah, well, no, the thing is, actually, like you said, none of them was really a disappointment. I, and again, I've got like one, right, other than the Pokemon thing, but it was when the GameCube was released. Now, the GameCube is still one of my, like, favourite ever consoles. I can see you laughing because you already know what's coming. That was, like, prime time my generation. I was a teenager, and it was, like, it was going to be one of my, like, my... I was so excited about it, and I said to Mum, I said, Mum, like, I want, I want a GameCube. I want Super Mario Sunshine. Like, that's all I want in life. That's all I want. She's like, yeah, yeah, it's a good GameCube. GameCube with a game that came. And I was like, yeah, okay, like, great. Christmas came. That was all I wanted, right? That was all I wanted. Like, Christmas came. And it's so iconic, the box, because it's a cube, of course, right? So I was just looking at it under the tree, and I was like, I can't wait, I can't wait. So Christmas came, and I ripped the box open. And then she was like, oh, and don't forget your game. And I picked up my game. I was like, yeah, I can't wait to play this. And I ripped it open. And there in front of me was Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. That, that is because, you know, like, I reckon like a good portion of my, my like Christmas influence, right? When I was there, when I was like living with you guys, like uh, before I'd moved away, then I had some influence of like what to get. And so I would go to mum, like, you know, you have to get this game with it. You have to get this game with it. Don't get this game. Definitely don't get this game. Because, you know, they always try and bundle some crap with the, uh, like with the consoles, you know what they do. And like, you know, the mums, they don't know. And, uh, but by then I must've been gone because there was no influence. Totally, so, totally. Yeah, you were like the protection. 100%. Protection shield. Like, and then suddenly, like, you've got no body armor anymore. So I got hit, man. I got hit hard by the by Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. And the thing is, it would be fine if, one, I was into Harry Potter at the time, and two, if the game wasn't a complete piece of shit. <laughs> Sorry, excuse, excuse my language, excuse my language. If the game was uh, better than it was, which it wasn't very good, I think I completed it probably in, like, the first half of the day. But the worst thing was... Like, I know that it was quite expensive and that mum was like really struggled getting it because they were sold out everywhere and I couldn't believe mum had got it and I knew she had got it I think she told me or I knew that she had got it so I was so excited so when I opened that I couldn't then go like oh why didn't you give me the game so I just went 
thanks, Mum. And she went, and that's the one that all the boys are playing because the man in the shop told me. And I went, thank you, so good. And then I sat there and played it for the, like, for the whole Christmas. And I asked the clerk, which is the one every boy wants. <gasps> you got me. It's quite epic when you get an actual console for Christmas, like a, like a mm. game, a console and a game. And to get both of those two things right, like on, on a launch as well, like uh, it's quite rare. I was trying to think like, what is my earliest memory of getting like a really good Christmas present, you know, because obviously I would have got a really good Christmas present when I was young, but what, and the first console I had that I can really remember <laughs> is, is the NES, you know? So I must've got the NES so I'm trying to think, like, I don't remember opening it at Christmas, but I must have got it for Christmas. And I do remember being excited about it, like, because I, I wanted one, and, and even though it wasn't, like, brand new or anything like that, and I got the Turtles pack, I think, and everything came with two controllers back then, much more generous, and uh, I got Super Mario Brothers 2. So I was, I, I remember being pretty, like, uh, pleased about that, but I don't really, like, have the full memory in my head, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The only, like, the strongest memory I have is two years after, it must have been the year after, or two years after, when it was my biggest disappointment, and I, ha and I haven't really had many disappointments, but, like, the biggest disappointment was that I had this NES now, you know, I had Mario 2, I'd bought Mario 1 for, for a birthday, like, because, you, know, you know, you get two, two NES games a year or something, well, maybe one for your birthday, one for Christmas, but I'd managed to get Mario Brothers as well, it was, it was half price game because it was older. And, and now Mario 3 was like kind of Mario 3 fever was like was there, you know, there was adverts on the TV for Mario 3. There was this amazing advert, you know, I don't know if you can you can show a clip of it or something in the way where everyone's chanting Mario and the camera zooms out. And it was like burned into my mind. And that's all I wanted. And I remember it was like it must have been like October or something I started the campaign to, to for, for mum to like you know mum I need this game like this Mario 3 game that's all I want for Christmas and you know what it's really popular I've been reading it's really popular uh you need to get it before it sells out because it's definitely going to sell out it's definitely going to sell out she's like yeah yeah it's going to sell out I'll definitely get it yeah but you know and then Christmas rolls around anyway long story short like Christmas rolls around I know it's going to be Mario 3 but at the back of my mind I know it's probably not going to be because it's, <laughs> that's how things go, right? Yeah. And uh, so I open, I open the case really slow and I know the box is going to be yellow, you know, and I open the case and it's not yellow and it's another game. And I, and I didn't even care. Like, I was just like, it's not my game. I, I was gutted, yeah? I was so gutted and I kind of pulled the box open. It's like, okay. And it was Gremlins 2, right? And Gremlins 2 is actually a pretty good game. And we ended up, ended up becoming a bit of a classic between like a few of us, right? You know, I think you've completed Adam and, and, and I yeah, yeah. played it a lot myself. But like at the time, you know, it was like this this kind of like, no, I, you know, I had the review, this like eight page review in Meme Machines and I'd like cut little Mario's out and like stuck them in places and 98% and like, I don't know, <laughs> I was like 11 or something like that. So, <laughs> so uh, that was like really disappointing. But the kind of the consolation was, I got Gremlins 2 and then mum is like was quickly like on the case and she was like yes I know it's not the one you wanted it was sold out sorry about that and I was like yeah well, I told you I told you and uh <laughs> but we'll but we'll um but I'll get you Mario 3 as well and uh and I was like I was thinking that's, that's a pretty good deal like you don't normally get that so I was like okay well it's you know uh, that will do and uh so then I just had to like style it out for a few weeks or something you know until it came back in stock. But I think that probably the real reason, like looking back as an adult, is probably because she was she didn't have the money to get it. And when she got paid before Christmas, she went into Dixon's or Curry's or whatever and was like, have you got Mario Brothers 3? And they're like, no, it's sold out. <laughs> and she's like, ah, okay. So she probably didn't have the, the money to buy it. But that's my, uh, my Christmas disappointment, which wasn't even really, in the end, that disappointing. Gremlins 2 became such a classic for us, probably ever since. Mm. You know, it's supposed to be like a, a really like, well, it is a, a negative feeling at the time you know you're really disappointed and stuff and then it becomes a, an absolute classic in the family and uh, you play it like I played Gremlins 2 every Christmas like without fail I'd play it every Christmas like even now I still play Gremlins 2 for some reason and I, obviously Gremlins is a Christmas film well well actually Gremlins 2 is not a Christmas film Gremlins 1 is a Christmas film um, but just something about that game reminds me so much of Christmas and the origin of that is probably that story that you just said, you know? Yeah, it definitely is, yeah, it must be because obviously I remember Gremlins 2 quite fondly and I can, I think, as Steve was telling that story, I think I can remember 
that moment and, and getting Gremlins 2. I can't even remember if I knew what Gremlins was. All I do remember is Steve's disappointment. And I did remember the hype about <laughs> Super Mario 3. I remembered it was like in, in the air or whatever. And I used to just be in awe to watch Steve play the NES, if I can remember rightly anyway. Um, and yeah, Super Mario 3 did eventually come about and it was amazing. But funnily enough, yeah, Gremlins 2 was, was a very well-played game. I even remember still the cheat right to the end, to the last level where you can just start there straight away. That isometric graphics were they were pretty good, you know. And it got to a point where I do remember, like you you got you had the 360 Steam or you were playing the 360 downstairs and and then I just disappeared for a while because obviously everyone was in the front room playing games and stuff, and then I disappeared because I went upstairs to play like the NES because it was always set up. It was just like a ritual. And then at one point you just came up, you know, came upstairs to see where I was and stuff. And you opened the door and you were like, why, like, why are you in here playing this shit game when you should be downstairs playing like Daytona or whatever? And I'm like, oh man, I don't know. And I just like hide it or something. So it got to the point where I played it so much that like people were sick of it. So I remember it being a really tough game to complete for me. Spider, the Spider Boss, yeah. Spider Boss, yeah. What, yeah, the Spider Gremlin. Yeah. Was there ever a Gremlins 1 game? Not, not, on, not on the NES, I don't think. I think there was like an Amiga game or something like that, Gremlins, but I don't know what, uh, maybe there's like other platforms like on the computers, you know, but I don't know what, what it would have been like. Which is really funny, Steve, because you told that story and I'm sure I'd heard this story loads before and it, it was a completely different game to what I thought you were going to say. So there's obviously another story. You've obviously got another disappointment somewhere. I was, oh. I thought you were going to say that you opened the box and you got Fantasia. So that was no. So this the... was this was nineteen. This was 1991. This is quite a long time ago, right? And we must have had another Christmas in that same house. That house we only lived in for a year, right? That bungalow. But we must have had another Christmas there because the next year got Mega Drive. Yeah, like just like uh, I wanted. But the thing is, like, we were on holiday, uh, October or something like that, I remember, in the caravan, right? And uh, and, and grandma was the, the only one rich enough to buy a console for us, right? <laughs> for me, anyway. And, and uh, so then I was kind of, I was trying, angling for this Mega Drive, and uh, and I was I was telling her, you know, I really would like a Mega Drive, but the thing is, and I was showing her the D uh, Argos or whatever, Dixon's catalogue, and saying, like, you need to get this pack, the Sonic pack, and definitely don't get this one. Don't get this Fantasia pack because Fantasia is not like a good game. Like, you know, and, and it's got it's got like bad reviews and it comes with this third party extra pad that's not very good that I don't want. And like, so I'm, I'm, I'm there telling her all these reasons why she shouldn't get this. Like, so I'm, I'm thinking like I'm in plenty of time, but grandma being grandma, she already bought it. <laughs> so, so she starts saying to me, like she's not interested in games and she starts saying to me, so, so what's wrong? What's wrong with it exactly? And I'm like, well, it's not good. You know, it's like 64% or something like that. And she was like, well, what did that's quite, it's better than 50%. And I'm like, oh, you don't know anything. Like 64% is terrible. I mean, it's don't buy it. And, and it's got like terrible collision detection. You know, just like remembering from the review, like probably showing her the review in the, in the magazine. And she's like, well, it, I've read the whole thing. And it just seems like it's quite difficult and it's quite good for a game to be difficult. And I was thinking, why are you defending this game? I was so confused. And then like, <laughs> mum's just like sitting there, like not saying anything. But then I re then of course I, I realized at some point between then and Christmas, like, yeah, she's probably already bought it. And I was even saying to her, like, if you've bought it, just take it back. They'll take it, they'll swap it for you, no problem, you know? And it'd be cheaper because the, the Mega Drive uh, with Fantasia is 169. You don't need to spend that much money or however much it was, I don't know. And because uh, I always wanted like the most efficient thing, you know, when you're a kid, like you, you don't understand those like inefficient like uh, decisions. Why, why buy that pack with Harry Potter? Like, to, don't get the pack. Yeah, exactly. And do you know don't what, I remember, I remember Fantasia and it, it's, it was so difficult, even now in my memory, I don't think I could get past the first, like the first two minutes because you try and these, these brooms that, and you can't jump over them and then they hit you and you just get, it's so, I remember it being so frustrating and difficult. And like you said, the trying to jump on ledges and stuff, like. Just falling into saying, water and dying. I, I was yeah. about to say, we, we played that when we went to, for the caravan, uh, when we did the caravan episode, because we were like, I was like, I've never played this. I love like Disney games. I love all the Mickey games, you know, the illusion games or whatever. And, um, we played it, we put it on, and like I think we played it for about five seconds because like we just jumped on this we jumped on this ledge and it just went 
<laughs> we like, okay, turn it off. Like, it's, like, it's, we can't be dealing with that. So that Christmas, it wasn't a disappointment because it got Mega Drive. Do you know what I mean? Like, there, there's nothing like better than getting a new console, right? Um, and it did come with Altered Beast and. Uh, you know, most of them came with Altered Beast uh, uh, and, and Fantasio as a pack-in and this crappy extra controller, but at least I had an extra controller, I suppose. But um, the, the saving grace of that Christmas was mum separately bought me Sonic. So I had a Mega Drive and I had Sonic. So like- Three games, man, wow. Yeah, because well, it came I... with the two games, came with two crap games or like pretty crappy and and, uh, and I got Sonic. So I just play Sonic all the time. And I remember I was so happy. I was like, I had the Mega Drive. I was holding the Mega Drive and uh, and I was like spinning the Mega Drive around. And I was, and I was going, oh, this Mega Drive, like, it's so great. And then I remember dropping it and I was thinking, oh my God, have I broke it? Like, before I play it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I, I've, on reflection, I think I've, uh, as much as I might have been in my own bubble, I don't really have disappointing stories about presence because I don't think I was I didn't really read much of the gaming magazines and stuff I just kind of loved all the games and then if I got a crap game I probably didn't realize until Steve was like oh, that's one of the worst ones I'm like oh is it oh no like I literally always hated Fantasia it's like I can see the moment because you're so annoyed by it and you had to go yeah no it's really good <laughs> it's really good and i've seen that face a few times over the years and it's just it's that funny phase of like i have to be grateful here but i am also a child and disappointed at exactly the same moment so yeah my disappointment stories are really your disappointment stories <laughs> we're all talking about disappointing yeah. stuff and it ends up being good stuff but what about yeah. like a, a like a really great christmas like uh pick? Well, well for me certainly it's it's christmas 1997 uh would have been, yeah, it would have been, yeah. Um, and I got the Nintendo 64. Before that Nintendo 64, I had been going to uh, our, um, our dad's house and staying there, obviously, uh, over whatever holidays it was. And so we would uh, play, and he got a Sega Saturn, right? And it was the first time I'd seen a console of that generation. Previous to that, I mean, the Saturn came out before the PS1. So we're talking jumping from Mega Drive and SNES to essentially the Saturn. And it was like, this is amazing. I can't believe how good it is. I was only playing Clockwork Night. It wasn't even that good a game, but I just remember everything about it was just obviously that so much better. And uh, I was I was enthralled by it. So I thought, right, this is definitely what I want. I definitely want to say Saturn. And uh, I can remember, I don't even know if it's definitely a bus, but my brain tells me it's a bus. So we're sitting on the bus and Steve was like, why do you want to get Sega Saturn? And I was like, I want to get a Saturn, Steve. That's that. Yeah, in my <laughs> usual way, you know. And he's like, oh. and he's looked at me disappointedly and he's like, if someone offered you, yeah, like a bar of dairy milk, yeah, and you're like, oh, that's really nice. And then they offered you one of the massive bars of dairy milk. Yeah, which one would you pick? And I was like, well, the massive bar. And he goes, exactly. So get the N64. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> but I think in the end I was swayed somehow or, or I decided, yeah, probably is best. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly, but that day, open the box and then there it is, this N64, which I think maybe my, my friend had had. And so I just got to see a little glimpse. So I knew what was coming. All I can remember is <laughs> opening it, being really, really stoked, right? amazed. And I was reading the, the reason I can remember the year so well is because the, I came with a calendar, came with a calendar of all the months and like different things. And it was obviously the calendar for 1998, meaning in a few weeks time from then. Um, and then on the back of that calendar, it says, see you in 1999. And I remember thinking, wow, imagine that's like the future. <laughs> and so like the next day, Boxing Day, we went down to Electronics Boutique and uh, on Steve's advice, I even got it written on my notes, on Steve's advice, it always seems to be that. <laughs> um, and we went down to the shop, got this Lilac Wars box, massive box, because it came packed with the rumble pack feature, like an actual massive rumble pack. It's like, well, we don't even see rumble features now, they're just in the controllers. But um, yeah, so that snapped into the back of the controller, which turned that into like a kilogram at least, <laughs> the controller <laughs> weight size. And um, yeah, and then we bought Lilac Wars. And I'd never played Star Fox. I think maybe I'd missed out on Star Fox on the snare. So I, that was a new game to me we obviously played Light It Was forevermore. I can just remember loving it, intently loving that game all the time and just always enjoying the rumble pack feature on those certain levels where at the end of the game, like you would kill the boss and it would just go off for ages. And you'd be like, it's like I'm right there. And now I'm like, I sit there and go, oh, this VR is boring. <laughs> just kind of sit there and go, 
<laughs> nowadays but it's crazy um yeah so definitely the n64 1998 well it wouldn't have been 1997's christmas with lilac wars on boxing day from electronics boutique none of that even exists now does it that shop doesn't exist god knows where lilac wars went or how it ended up lilac wars didn't go anywhere man it's right here i'm telling you yeah. like lilac wars, it lives on i I, re- I replayed lilac wars not even very long ago and it still stands up it's still such an excellent game and lilac wars is such a weird name for it because we knew it was like Star Fox, but it couldn't be called Star Fox 64 but like uh I bought it like years and years later. You never get any bargains here in Finland, right? You never, never find a bargain. Like, you, you know, the games are expensive. You, you, maybe if you find five euros off, it's like, well, wow. But one day I walked into the supermarket and there was three copies of Star Wars, uh, Star Fox 64, right? Star Fox 64 for the, for the 3DS. Five euros each. And I was like... I was, I was like, this is such a good bargain. Oh my God, I should buy all three. But I didn't want to buy all three because I thought I want someone else to have the... Anyway, I ended up buying one and then I ran back and bought the, another one. And I think, I think I sent it to someone. I don't know if I sent it to one of you guys or I just sent it to a friend or something. But uh, I played it. It's still amazing, except for that there's no rumble. Oh. And, that, and it wipes out so much of the experience. I know the rumble is, it was like super basic. Nowadays, you've got HD rumble and all of that kind of stuff. But like that rumble was part of the experience. And without it, you just, it just isn't the same thing, even though it looks great still. And yeah, I felt like a few of those, like a lot of those games, which were originally on the SNES, like which were just like perfected versions on the 64 at the time. Because I, I did it in reverse. I ended up playing those originals later and just going, yeah, these are like just like, really primitive versions um, but the 64s were like the definitive fight for me the thing is i love the saturn right uh, and i convinced one friend to get one and uh and, and that was pretty selfish because i convinced him to get it because he, he was like yeah i should get a playstation and i was like no 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 get saturn get saturn and then i could play games at his because i didn't have one because I, I wanted one right but by the, I, I could play a saturn i could play the saturn you know and i remember him being like secretly a bit disappointed after like when everyone else was playing playstation but uh the reason I was like, I, I think the reason I must have been pushing for you to get an N64 was because it was four players out the box. You know, you didn't have to buy any like stupid multi-tap and most of the, and most of the games were built around or loads of the games were built around having this four player function. And, you know, in the end, that was like uh, playing GoldenEye, even though like it wasn't easy to find four controllers. Like if you want to come play, you have to bring your own controller. But that was, uh, that was pretty sweet, I think. Yeah. It's funny when you mentioned about the Saturn though, Chris, and like really wanting one, and you said why you wanted it. I wanted you to get a Saturn too, and that was because of House of the Dead, like number one, because we used to play mm-hmm. that all the oh, time. Yeah. Um, at, was it your friend's house? Like, yeah, just the I, road, mean, I used to be allowed to come and watch you play, I should say. Like, I didn't play it, but I, w- I wasn't always allowed to play it because I was quite young then. And you know, you had the light guns and everything like that, and it was it was a classic House of the Dead one, it was not often spoken about as a classic which is a shame like not, not it's crap on the uh, saturn though no know. but that's what i'm talking about the saturn one like we used to play the saturn one and but yeah. at the time i didn't think it was crap at the time i used to love it and um yeah it's because it's not crap on the saturn you're just a purist you don't like you've never liked playing those arcade games with anything else other than the like proper guns on an arcade machine but, it, but, but I, they had, I they had, had the proper guns yeah i mean i had i had houses there but, for the, the and i thought it was great Virtual Cop was awesome on on the uh, on Saturn, right? But that's when they like figured out how to do the three D properly. But but like when you go on YouTube, right, and you look on you look at the video, like oh yeah, how was it? Like how was uh, House of the Dead one on the Saturn? And I, okay, the game was probably like when you play it through, the experience is probably pretty similar. But the graphics look so crap. Like I think it was years later I played it on the on the Dreamcast and, and when this is the game I've always wanted. Like this is the one, and I remembered it to be exactly that. And it was only when we um, we played it again, like me and you, Jamie, when we went to an arcade. And didn't the guy almost try to sell you that machine? I think it was more like we were trying to buy it from him uh, oh. than, than he was trying to sell it to us, but he was willing to sell it to us. And we were like, yeah. Yeah, we're I mean, and obviously at the time we're like, that sounds brilliant, but we've got a whole like attic full of games and consoles. We're not about to buy a six foot like machine. And, and where, are we, where are we gonna put it? How are we gonna get it back? So we were like, nah. Ironically, October just gone. We went, we went back to that same place, that same arcade, and we were like, "This is the place." Like it was down in Little Hampton. We were like, "This is the place where 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 we saw that House of the Dead." And we went and we looked in, and it was all boarded up. And there's a few 
old arcade at the back, but we couldn't see House of the Dead. So that's obviously just gone somewhere, probably to the tip. There's one in Brighton. Uh, there's like a little arcade on the seafront that has an original hang-on, um, like motorbike. Wow. I feel like the one in Chimu. And it's like, again, it's at the very back, switched off, like not being used. It's so sad to see, you know. Blue came along and obviously just changed the game, didn't it? Because House of the Dead 2 in the arcades was already fantastically good. Um, and then when it was released on the Dreamcast, it was almost the same. It was like, Dreamcast was basically an arcade in your house. That was the thing that uh, the, the Dreamcast for me was just memorable, was just being able to play those games at home. And it's the same as the arcades. It was just the best thing ever. Speaking about the uh, Dreamcast, the one game that I did used to play at Christmas a lot um, was Shemu, and that was because in Shemu you get to Christmas, don't you? And then you got the like the the Santa Claus sales guy walking like around the streets and stuff. So it was always some sort of like ritual of mine to actually play Shemu at Christmas time. Excuse me. Merry Christmas! Ho ho ho! And just try and sync up the timelines to like you know because it was so atmospheric with the snow and like the Christmas song that you can hear in the background and stuff. So to be honest, there, that was a Christmas game. While I didn't get it bought for me for Christmas, I did used to play quite a lot of Christmas. Yeah, yeah, that's shame you definitely rings Christmas bells in my head as well. Like, uh, yeah. I think the game spans so many years that it's quite possible I was playing it over many Christmases. I mean, of course, we could talk about Shemmy all day. Couldn't we? <laughs> what was a Christmas where me and you played um, Broken Sword for Christmas? It's like On the Xbox. Broken Sword 3, yeah. Broken Sword 3, yeah, I remember that. Sleeping Dragon, yeah. Yeah. One of the recurrent things of my Christmases that really, and it's great because it's the perfect sort of game to play at Christmas, the rhythm games, right? I got loads of them for Christmas. Donkey Konga in the background there. I got that for Christmas and I got double double bongos because of course like yeah. oh, you guys are there. So like I get, I got Donkey Konga for the GameCube. I think maybe the year after I got the GameCube and then like one of you guys maybe got me an extra pair of bongos. So we'd sit there playing these rhythm games. I remember getting the PlayStation and it coming with Vibraband, right? I also remember um, getting uh, Beat Mania. Beat Mania yeah. uh, was another rhythm game, and I remember that playing that around Christmas time. Uh, rock Band, like with the Ion Drum Kit, Rock Band too. So this is a thing that. Is that a Samba Amiga as well. Oh, yeah, Samba Amiga on the Dreamcast. Like, and, and in my head, I'm, I've suddenly got this vision of all of us sitting in in our mum's conservatory, all there together, all sitting on the sofa playing rhythm games. Whether it's Samba Amiga, whether it's the bongos, whether it's the drums, like. Yeah, so that's that's a for me that's a great Christmas memory, and it hasn't ended really. To be honest, for me, I've I've been playing Beat Saber for the last whole year solidly. Even just before we got off this, I was like, oh, um, I'll go, I'll go and do half an hour on Beat Saber. So I've still been playing rhythm games, and I got so good at Beat Mania. There was only like one track I couldn't beat, and even then, I would still avidly try. Well, while you mention what you're what you're playing at the moment, it's probably a good place to sort of round up this this podcast. Is like. What it, what is everyone playing this Christmas? Like what what are we playing right now? Are, are there any games that, that you're into in the moment? Well, funnily enough, I've just done my like uh, not yearly. I don't do it every year, but like uh, every couple of years, maybe every two or three years, I do a playthrough of the original Halo, and uh, and it's part of Game Pass on the Xbox. So I was just like, oh, I've just picked it up a, a couple of weeks ago, and, and I've just finished it yesterday, and that was uh, was pretty good. Got a few things I've forgotten in it, like unexpectedly, because I thought I knew that game like back of my hand but like actually i i know three different levels of it really really well and not so much of the uh, the rest of it but that was cool that that's like uh for me quite christmasy because at some point you go to these snow levels and you're kind of alone in this like snowy wasteland you can get lost in it uh so yeah so that's been my christmas thing so far and i've just started wow. dragon quest game as well i mean i i um, i have been using my vr more and more um, just because I've got it sitting there. So I've been playing like Spider-Man and whatever else. And no matter how many times you play Spider-Man, it's still, you, you get really used to it. And after about 10 seconds, you're used to it. But ever on the first go of Spider-Man, you absolutely categorically always feel incessant amounts of fear in your body. It's like a weird thing because obviously you know it's not real. But then as soon as you get on it, your brain goes, no, I think this is real. And just for a moment, you're like, because <gasps> you're just going up, like flying up in the middle, miles high in the air. Fear in a complete safe environment. I don't really... I don't really replay games much. Obviously, Shenmue 3, I've, I'm replaying at the moment slowly and occasion. But yeah, so probably Shenmue 3 and Beat Saber at the moment. Nice. Uh, I've been, I, I just, like, exactly the same as you, Steve. Every few years, I replay Ocarina of Time on the Nintendo 64. Because my Nintendo 64 is still one of my consoles I play the most. And I know this Christmas, I can't believe I haven't even mentioned this. 
a game we'll definitely be playing loads. But of course, and oh, we haven't mentioned that at the moment, these COVID times, we're not going to be seeing each other this Christmas, apart from Adam, of course, you and I, um, who will actually be in the same room together playing Snowboard Kids. Because Snowboard Kids, of course, is the most Christmassy game that you can play. Um, so we'll be playing that on the Nintendo 64. But yeah, I recently replayed Ocarina of Time. Um, and actually, Steve, every time I replay Ocarina of Time, there's always a little bit that I'm like, oh, I didn't realise that. Or, oh, there's a new thing that you sort of discover or you rediscover. This was the first time I played it flawlessly all the way through and I knew everything. And I almost said to myself, that's enough now. I don't think, I, I don't think I'm going to need to play that again now for like maybe 10 years or something. Um, but on that note, my most played thing at the moment is my Switch. Um, and I just played through Link's Awakening that was bought for me in July. And I haven't been able to play my Switch once because unfortunately Emma got Animal Crossing and I haven't seen it. So my Switch disappeared um, to Emma. But I had a, I booked two weeks off and I played Link's Awakening. And it's brilliant. It was so much fun. It was beautifully remastered. You remember everything, but also it's so... It's so well done. If you like, Chris, I know Link's Awakening was a was a big one for you. Um, it it's it's a, like a, an amazing replay. So I played that. Yeah, I, I actually I was just thinking um, because I got a Switch recently from my girlfriend and been playing it a little bit. But um, one one game that we have been able to play a bit, not much yet, but uh, is Doctor Mario. And I think we've always wanted to play the original Dr. Mario like multiplayer online and we've never been able to until now. So I've been playing a lot with, well, not a lot, but quite a bit. We've had a couple of games with Steve. About half a dozen um, games, yeah. Like yeah one, it's, one. Been, it's been a bit different getting used to it because obviously it's a bit laggy at times and stuff if the connection drops out. But otherwise it's like basically what we always wanted, like NES, but multiplayer online. And I played with you yesterday didn't I, yeah, that's you, you, you played with me yesterday, and there were some there were some pretty tight games. Obviously, it's really funny because when you're playing, if you can see in the background, I've got my trophy that was made for me, the the Doctor Mario Champion of Japan 2018, and then this is Doctor Mario, the Japanese version that we bought in Japan that was framed to put on the wall. Um, yes, and I'm think. currently, you know, as modest as I can be, I'm currently the champ of Doctor Mario. But yesterday, you played me online, and you'd obviously been getting in some practice because I was like. You can't see me, but I'm at home, like red face, so angry, like so angry that I was losing. I lost three in a row. I got a whitewash in one of these games, and I was like, my vein in my head. I was so angry, got like shouting at it, going, "It's lagging! It's the lag! It's not me!" That's um, one good thing yeah. about it being online is that you, it just isolates all of the excuses. What's amazing as well is that you've got the you can if you can buy the NES Joy Cons. So you can play with a NES controller. Yeah, yeah. Like you so can play the NES games with a NES controller online. It's, it's great, man. Like, and if you've got a strong enough connection, it's basically perfect. Um, but yeah, so I've been playing a bit of that. Um, probably continue to play that. Um, I've been and I would, Steve, you bought me a, a mini Mega Drive uh, for my birthday last year, maybe or year before. Um, so I've been playing that every now and again. But this year I played a lot of Monster World Four. Um, so much more retro than all of the games you've mentioned. But like. A game that I completely missed. It's part of the Wonder Boy series, which I never played, um, but it's been so fun. It's probably the only game I've played on the Mega Drive that consistently. Um, but yeah, if you've not played it before, man, I definitely recommend um, playing it because it's a classic and I, I completely missed it. For anyone who doesn't play games, there's this sort of. Um, uh, depressing idea that games are this like sitting oh well, happy christmas i'm gonna go up to my room now put my headphones on and do this which maybe is like that for some people but for us i think there was some real nice interactive stuff going on where we all took turns and we all stood up and we all played games and we played tennis and bowling and rhythm stuff so yeah that's why it felt so right to talk about games around christmas time because of that you know everyone joining in and it not really being a big issue if it's someone else's console it's been awesome hearing some of them um some of the memories and uh we should we should probably wrap it up there, Jamie. What, what do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think we should wrap it up. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe and leave. If you've got any good Christmas memories, leave comments below and share some of your best gaming Christmas memories with us. Um, so everyone out there, have a happy Christmas and stay tuned for another episode of the Retro Bros.